Hello, my name's John, this is a painting video, and you're watching War Games Models and Other Hobbies. Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to start painting this little character from the Warhammer Giant kit, the Ale Guzzler Gargant kit, whichever you prefer. This is Johan Stren. I hope I pronounced that correctly, but it's the little running guy. So I haven't painted anything in for a little while, so I wanted to get back into it, and I thought this is a nice little character to start working with. I always tend to start with the lowest level of detail, which is generally the skin for most models. So that's what I'm going to start with in this session. I'm going to keep it quite simple with what I paint, the kind of the number of colours and that kind of thing, but we shall see how far I get. Now one thing that I do use is a dry palette. I don't really use a wet palette, I have used them in the past, but I actually prefer using a dry palette. But everyone has their own kind of preferences. So what I'm looking to do is just get a base colour down on the skin areas. For that I am using Kislev Flesh. I think that flesh colour is still available, but you can use pretty much whatever colour you want. It's quite warm today, so I'm hoping it dries quite quickly, but if not, I've got my little hairdryer that'll let me speed up the process. So the reason why I tend to always start with the lowest level, like the skin on a model, is I don't have to worry about being tidy. I can paint all those details without having to worry about painting within the lines. So for me personally, it speeds up that painting process. Make sure I keep it all in camera while I'm doing this. Now, this brush isn't the best quality brush, but it's okay to get the base coat on in place. This isn't one that I've recently tidied up, which was in one of my last videos. It is getting to the time. I know I've, I've cleaned some recently, but I'm going to have to buy a few new brushes. I'd always like to hear recommendations, so if you've got those, please drop it in the comments. Okay. So there is... the first stage is done there. Now what I'm going to do is... Just quickly go over this with the hairdryer. Right, let's find. Just saw a little bit of fluff or something on there. There we go. Okay, so next step whenever I'm painting skin is I give it a wash now. So that is the base coat of the colour. I'm then going to go with a wash in this case of Reekland Flesh Shade. There is various different flesh shades that you can get, different washes, different inks. Let's just quickly get this on. Now the thing I like about the washes is the speed it allows you to do things. Now you probably will see there's still a few mould lines on this little character. I don't mind about mould lines to be honest and this character is just a bit of an appetizer to get me back into painting. I haven't painted for quite a while and it is one of my favourite things to do in the hobby. But I just haven't had my mojo recently with that, so... 
I'm hoping this will just put the edge back in for me so I kind of get that feeling again and as you can see I don't mind going over the edges with this as I go that's why I like to start with this layer I can just get it on really quickly something I also find is working on details like the faces first helps me get an idea of the character and maybe a bit about them kind of in my head their own kind of background and that kind of thing so it helps me connect with the model I suppose right let's just give that a quick blast with the hairdryer Okay, so the next thing I want to do, I want to knock that colour back slightly. So my go-to for knocking back colours is Rakarth Flesh. And this is just going to be a very light dry brushing. And you'll notice most of the colours I use in this video are skin tones, browns, greys, that kind of thing. As it kind of gives a good base to the character so let me just get off all of paint dry brushing is always an interesting one you get brush on you get paint on the brush and then you get rid of all of it so this is this dry brush is pretty well worn okay there we go and for the basics, for the skin, that's it done. Next step, just move these paints over here. I'm going to start thinking about the detail itself. Let's try and get that in focus. Why is that not in focus? There we go. So, first things first. I want to get his teeth painted as well as the eye that you see. Luckily one eye is covered by the hat so I'm not going to have to worry too much about um, making sure they line up when I do the pupil. Also has a little kind of mole or wart or something on his chin. I'm going to leave that just to get picked up by the shade when I put that in. So let's start with the teeth and the eyes so I need to find myself a nice fine brush and I'm gonna go with some Corax white right right so this is where I've got to be quite careful And normally at this stage, what I end up doing is accidentally overpainting with the white and having to get some pink, some flesh colours back in. Helps if I do it on the camera as well, apologies for that. So let's get this eye painted. Okay, so not much white needed at all for that. There we go, let's zoom in so you can see that. So the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get a bit of a black wash, so I'm gonna use some Nuln Oil just to get the detail of the mouth and everything kind of highlighted, low lighted, whichever, and pick out a few other details because then I may put more skin tones over the top. Now this is a method 
I often use for painting of using washes and inks as it allows me to get depth to the models quite quickly, pick out details and that kind of thing. And what I often do is paint it on and then gently take a little bit of it off as I paint. So there we go now with the detail of the head there. It's actually turned out quite nicely there that one. So now I have to do the job I hate and that's putting the pupil in place. Now I have a few methods for doing this but most of it generally comes down to a very fine brush, some black paint and hoping for the best to be honest. With one eye it does become a bit easier. So I'm now going to shut up and I'm going to do it. There we go. There you go. That's the eye and the detail around the face done. So while I'm working on this one, I'm going to carry on sorting out the head of this character. So he's wearing a little hood as well as his hat. The hat itself, I think I'm going to go with Rhinox Hyde to have a dark cap. And then the little hood, I'm going to go for some Skaven Blight Dinge. So I'm going to do that now. And the key thing at this point is I have to start being careful about where I'm painting. Oops. And not throw my brush about. So normally, I would wait a while before doing this, but I want to get the detail of the head sorted so I can get an idea about what I want for the rest of this model. And I'm only going to use the two colours like I said. And then I'm going to use the Rakarth flesh again to highlight with a dry brush the two colours. And then I'm going to ink wash them. Just so I can get just a small amount of detail. I like painting for simplicity rather than overly complex kind of paint jobs. I've already annoyingly just gone over the line on his cheek so I'm gonna to have to build up some skin tone again. That's okay. Sometimes you have a wobbly hand and you end up going over the lines. Don't worry if that happens, you can always fix it later on. It's quite a small model to keep on camera while I'm painting, so apologies if I go off camera at all. Okay, let's get the Rhinox hide. 
I have to say, one of my favourite colours, Rhinox Hide. A really rich brown that I always use as a go-to for when I'm kind of painting leathers or anything brown. But I'm really actually quite enjoying this, getting back into it. I can feel the urge to paint is coming back and it's I haven't had it for a little while just because of various circumstances but you know what it happens sometimes you should never feel bad if you stop doing a bit of your hobby because you don't feel like it because the fact of the matter is it's your hobby and you can do what you damn well want with it as long as you're not screwing it up for anyone else okay, got to be careful now that I don't go on to Sorry, I keep going off camera. I've got to create some little marks so I know where shot is. So I'm always in frame, but still getting used to this new setup. Okay. So while that's drying, I'm just going to grab another flesh colour to tidy up. right in front of me a drawer with all my paints in I'm going to use a little bit of Cadian flesh tones not a lot just a small amount actually oh, has that paint gone a bit hang on. give it a bit more of a shake didn't quite mix up Let's see now. That's better. So I don't want too much. It's just... to pick out the edge of where I accidentally painted over. But also pick out a few little sections. His face, more on there a bit on his palms just to blend that colour evenly over the whole thing there we go right next thing I'm going to blast it with a hairdryer so I can go on to the next step Do you want? Right. So, back to the Rakar flesh and get an appropriate dry brush. Let's go through my paint wall here. Now that's a little bit too big. Yep, that one will do. So I just use this one. Get some paint on there. Knock it off. And then what I'm looking to do on the hat is get a bit of directional detail on there. So just bringing it into the center. And 
down there. So it's quite a, lot, a heavy dry brush this. Because what I'm going to do is then put a wash over this to darken it up. So for that wash I'm going to use some Agrax Earthshade and I'm actually going to go straight into it. I'm not going to wait too long for that paint to dry. Apologies, I keep moving off camera. I'm going to have to shift my camera slightly for the next video so everything stays in shot. And I'm going to paint over the hood as well with Agrax. Get the colour that I want. And let's put a little bit of detail on the face itself. There we go. And just going to run around the hands where. The sleeves join. I suppose I'll find out in the edit how much I've missed on camera, so apologies for that. Okay, so at this stage, what I'm going to do is get the hair dryer onto it again. So what you'll see, there's a little bit of a glossiness to that wash layer because of the way that I forced it to dry and also it's getting quite old and the bit of the matting agent in it isn't quite as good as it used to be. So what I am going to do now is go over all of the areas that I did with the Agrax Earthshade with Null Oil to knock the colour back a bit but also get rid of a bit of that gloss I quite like the idea of kind of darker tones and things like that it is my style of painting is to have those darker kind of finishes it's my own personal preference everyone can choose how they do it themselves Okay. Right. Let's bring this closer to camera so you can see it. It's 
So let's knock that back a little bit with the hairdryer just to start drawing it off a bit more. Okay, so I'm calling it for this video now. That is the skin and hat and detail done on Johan. I do like how that's turned out. It hasn't taken me too long to do those details, quite simply, and without too much faff. I've got to decide on the colour of his clothes. If you've got any suggestions, please drop it in the comments. I was thinking maybe a two-tone tunic and then plain leggings. The boots and the belt I'll probably do to match the hat and the hood. If you've got any suggestions about the colour schemes, please drop it in the comments. Hope you've enjoyed this video and join me for the next one where we carry on painting Johan. But for now, thanks for tuning in. My name's John, and you've been watching War Games Models and Other Hobbies.